Well, Facebook Marketplace, too. Let's not be exclusive to just Craigslist. Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett. Welcome to Real Guitar Talk. And today we are counting down my top 10 least favorite Craigslist cliches and pet peeves. So top 10 pet peeves and least favorite cliches. I guess that's how you'd say that. I do a lot of buying, selling, and trading on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace. Part of how I was able to build up my channel actually was doing some savvy trading for gear that I thought people would be interested in reviews of. And when you get into that world, you, you, you sort of engulf yourself in it. You know, I've wasted an awful lot of time sort of endlessly scrolling through Craigslist listings, watching it like a hawk, making trade offers, making uh, buying offers, selling, jumping around prices, negotiating with people. There's a whole language to it. There's a whole etiquette to it. And there's a lot of it that just really, really irritates me. Let's dive in with number 10. I mean... Did you label it correctly and photograph it? Because then, yes, I probably do know what I'm looking at. Or conversely, maybe the whole reason I clicked on your listing is because I don't know what it is and I find it interesting. What does that even mean? If you're looking at it, you know what it is? Is this some kind of, like, big flex of, like, you know, well, what I have is so good, you don't even... It's like, just stop. It's a stupid thing to say. I don't want to call you. I don't want to text you. It's 2024. Who calls anymore? What I really want to do is I want to send you a cold, impersonal email where we agree to meet in some kind of a sketchy parking lot with very expensive music gear and large amounts of money and do the deal that way. Is that so much to ask? Oh, this is one of my favorites. If somebody's like, well... I'll trade, but only if the trade is heavily in my favor. That's like, I will make a deal with you if I can take advantage of you. What kind of a person are you? Nope, I'm sure it's not. Listed 283 weeks ago? Listen, you sell your Epiphone list, Paul. You sell your Squire Stratocaster. There's no shame in having that. You're going to get what it's worth. Everything sells for what it will sell for. You're not tricking anyone. You're not making some kind of a sales pitch by doing a brand association. You're just pissing people off by saying that it's something that it's not. Well, it's Epiphone by Gibson. It's, a, it's an Epiphone. Don't, you're not going to trick anyone into thinking that it's a Gibson. Just stop it. All right, this one I'm going to give a little a little credence to because people will make excuses as to why they sell something and sometimes people do want to know if you're buying it like okay hang on a second why are you selling this is this something that you I, I I get that and some people don't make bad excuses but there are some really bad excessive and me think he doth protest too much excuses out there it should be totally acceptable to just say I didn't like this someone else get it that should be okay. We all have a lot of musical preferences and things, but I do understand that it's not a very good sales pitch to be like, this was a piece of crap and I just want to get some of my money back. Okay, that's fair. But when you see some of these excuses, they're just like, yeah, I I'm, I'm only selling it because I have six of them and I only need five. I don't know. Some of them just seem a little forced. You really don't need an excuse as to why you're selling it. Hey, I need money and this is not my favorite thing. Totally okay. This one goes way beyond the musical instruments one. My loss is your gain. I, I just don't understand it. Like, are you feigning some kind of altruism here? Of like, you're trying to be charitable towards me? Or like, you know, like, look, I'm taking one for the team here. So someone, it's like, no, you're trying to get money for something. Fine. And it's not really my gain if I'm buying something. It's also my monetary loss, no matter how much that loss is. It... Oh, you ever see this one? There's always the, the like, the sort of alpha male, I'm going to take on the scammers. Like, scammers will be ignored or abused. And you're... So yeah, I'm sure that Nigerian prince and his distant cousin over here who's going to pay you via certified check, I'm sure they're real intimidated by you. Oh, I just can't. 
I just can't. I hate this phrase. I hate it. I hate this stupid phrase. Thinning the herd. Go on out of there, little doggy. We're on heading up to Tahlequah, and you're slowing down the herd, so I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to cut you loose. No. No. Your guitars are not cattle, and you're not a real cowboy. I don't care if you play a Gretsch and listen to Billy Gibbons all the time. You are no more a real cowboy than Jerry Jones is a real cowboy. Oh, I see that phrase everywhere, thinning the herd. It drives me bonkers. It's the worst phrase. It's the worst. It's the worst phrase. Those are my top 10 least favorite cliches and pet peeves of the used guitar market. Let us know what are your pet peeves or what are your least favorite cliches. And also let us know in the comments, what was the best score you ever got off of a used listing? Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. If anyone else out there still uses Uncle Henry's, put that in there. I'm Jack Fawcett. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. I see you with your food up high. Hey, why not share some with this stand-up guy? What's that? Footsteps? A doorbell do I hear? I'm scaring off the mailman every time that he comes near Cause I'm a dog And I know what's up They call me Dr. Craig There's bound to be some food that tumbles off your plate And when it hits the floor, I'll be there like lightning You better hope it's not your ankle that I'll be biting Cause I'm a dog And I know what's up They call me Dr. Crane They call me Mr. Puff to do.